this. So the Miata is coming together very well. Um, we got the bash bar built. If you saw in the last update video, um, we got it running pretty good. We got it. We minimized the leaks on it. I put a new valve cover gasket on it and that's been working good. Um, deleted the muffler. we got a bumper cut going on over here. Looks pretty rad. Seats in. So we're coming together really well. I got some knuckles coming um, for the front end to increase the angle on it. And then uh, I'm going to be rebuilding the brakes and stuff on the front as well at that time. So the car's coming together really well, but there is one thing that I need to get done um, that's really kind of essential for drifting, and that is to weld the diff. So I'm not super familiar with Miatas. I know that a lot of them have limited slip differentials. Um, however, mine has a lot of miles on it, so I'm kind of worried the clutches are going to be worn out on in the differential. So we're going to go ahead, just weld it up, make it fully locking. This car's not going to be on the road very often at all, so um, that's going to be the route that we're going to do. Alrighty guys, so already ran into my first issue. With the 1.8 Miata diffs, you have to pull the axles out of the car, um, I guess, from what I've read. And um, to do that, you have to take the tire off to be able to get to the nut that holds the end of the axle on. Um, as you guys know, I just got this car and uh, it has these like funky lug nut, spiked lug nut things. Um, and I thought I could get it off with this uh, socket, but unfortunately it's not fitting. So this is kind of what I'm working with here. I've got these weird spikes on some of them. I got most of them off, but I'm going to run to the auto parts store and see what I can find. And um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we can uh, get these tires off because that's kind of essential for a drift car, especially. All right, guys, so I think we looked out and found what we needed. Hopefully, we'll see. I don't want this video to just be a hunt of me looking for a lug nut socket, so hopefully it'll work. Success, kind of, on the wheel. Where are the lug nuts, by the way? They're kind of weird. I, I get that, you know, they make these, like, six-point sockets. But the problem is, is most six-point sockets are too small. I needed a 19 millimeter, And uh, I got a smaller one, so it didn't work. But this is how I got it off. I used a 19 millimeter impact socket, hammered it on there. I know I shouldn't have done it. Now I'm paying for it because I started on the other wheel and look what got stuck. So I'm going to have to work on that later, but it's soaking in PV blaster right now. I'm going to keep rolling. So on this side, so next step, 32 millimeter socket. Hmm. Brakes work pretty well. Noted. So we're going to impact it off. Here you go. All right, so next we're gonna loosen up this top bolt on the knuckle, just pull the whole knuckle back, and then we will be able to pop the axle out and hopefully slide it out, we'll see. Okay, so that's really tight. Okay, it's so taking off the top part of the knuckle. Totally not the route. Um, I'm gonna take the bottom part. After I do a little research, I'll take the bottom bolt um, where the lower control arm connects to the spindle off. And then uh, hopefully that'll give us a little bit better results, but I'll let you know. Whew, 
All right, guys, I'll show you where we're at now. I cannot get these axles out of this thing. I don't know, I think the bearing might be screwed up in the spindle. So, yeah, I don't know, that's that side. And then over here, same story going on. I don't know if there's any way for me to drop this diff without taking the axles out. I might try to do that. I've been kind of watching YouTube videos and I haven't seen that done yet, but I think that's what we're going to have to try to do. And then I'm just going to try to pick up some new, new axles and new spindles probably because, or maybe, maybe redo the bearings. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but main objective right now is just to get the diff out still. So one step at a time. When you're working on these big complicated things, which this wasn't supposed to be, but um, whenever you're working on a big build or big project, you just do the next best thing and keep on keeping on. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, guys, success. I got one side out. I had to take the whole spindle off with it. So I had to remove the brake caliper and everything, but got it popped off. I'll show you what I did. I had to use I literally had to use this angle iron to pry it off with the screwdriver. Helps if you do like both sides at once so you get equal pressure on each side of the um, axle. But uh, yeah, two hours later, got it out. So I'm gonna try the same strategy on the other side and then we'll start pulling the diff off. All right, people, so it's the next day. Um, got both the axles out. There's one. So again, with this side, I had to basically leave the spindle on and then just rip it out. Um, I'll show you what I did. Getting these axles out is no joke, man. Like, I've taken the axles out on my Subaru, and it's no big deal compared to this. So there's the diff right there. Um, I had to take the exhaust off so I could get more room. And basically what I did... Got these two, these two pry bars from Walmart. They're like seven dollars a piece, and I had to actually get on both sides of where the axle splines go into the diff and pry it off evenly at the same time. And I had to put a lot of force on that thing. So um, I don't know if that's normal. I feel like it felt like it wasn't normal. But then I looked at some forums, and they were saying that. Um, sometimes they're really stuck in there. So if you decide to do this on your NB Miata, I know NAs are different, but, um, definitely get two nice pry bars and just evenly put pressure on both sides and don't be afraid to really yank on them cause they are in there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the diff out now and, uh, we'll finally get to welding this thing. All right guys. So important little tip here, lowering the diff down, as you can see right there. The diff bolts to this subframe frame kind of thing. The back bolt, you can just unbolt and it'll come off. The inner bolt right here, you want to loosen it a little bit or loosen it about an inch or so, two inches maybe. I don't know. Or you can take it all the way out and then rethread it. But you want to make it so there's enough room on the end of the bolt that you can hit it with a hammer. So it goes up and it's going to knock this little nut thing right there out of the subframe. Really important that you do that because you are not gonna be able to pry that little dude out because I tried and I couldn't do it. So just a little tip for you, diff's almost out. <sighs> it was a battle, but we got her down, so. It was definitely not as easy of a job as I thought, but I'll go ahead and crack this thing open and uh, clean her up and get her welded up, and then uh, and then we'll have to try to get it back in. I think it'll be easier to get back in, but with the rate that this job's going, who knows? All right, people, got her cracked open. It won't make a 
whole huge mess here. Oh, yep, I am. Probably the number one thing that I use most. Okay. I got kitty litter all over it, so that's nice. What we're going to do is weld these together, these spider gears together. Um, if I can remove the spring with the limited slip deal on it, I will. Because then we can put a plate in there and weld the spider gears to the plate as well. Um, but I'll just have to play with it a little bit and see what we got going on i don't know exactly how you take that out but i'm sure it says online somewhere but yeah we're about there now i guess i should just know really quick welding your diff isn't probably the best idea on something that you're gonna daily drive all the time um i've ran a couple welded diffs on my off-road trucks and uh, they've always held up okay, and like I've never had any reliability issues or any of them come apart or anything like that, and we abuse those pretty hard. Um, so as far as breaking things, I wouldn't worry as much about the diff as the axles. Um, however, yeah, daily driving it, it's just no fun because your tires are chirping all the time, people are staring at you. Um, it gets really sketchy on like snow and ice and even rain sometimes. It's not as predictable. So um, for this car, it's fine since I'm not going to be driving it on the road all the time. I'm not going to be dailing it every single day. Um, and I'm not too worried about it. But this isn't something that I would go ahead and do on your daily driver. Unless you really want to have that spooled rear end kind of feel of, I mean, power to you if you do. But um it's not as, not as comfortable driving one of these around. So just thought I'd throw that in here, but uh, we're gonna start welding her up and see how she looks. So the diff looking pretty good. Um, I'm gonna throw a couple more beads on it. All right, people, day three of the welded diff adventure. Got get my shoes on. Got it all back together. And some nice red paint to match the bash bar. And I think if I build a rear bash bar, um, I'm gonna paint it the same color as well. So should be looking good. We're gonna go ahead, throw that puppy in there. Um, I have the exhaust off, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut the resonator out so it'll just be um, a cat on the exhaust. The only kind of muffling will be a catalytic converter. And I would delete it, but the O2 sensor is actually like in the cat. I don't really know. I'm gonna have to do more research on that. So should sound pretty tough, pretty mean, or pretty awful. I don't know, we might have to put a glass pack on it or something, but. Yeah, I'll get it in there and show you guys what it looks like. Hopefully it doesn't take me, you know, eight hours to get it back in like it took me to get it out. But we'll see. All right, people. Good news. Good news. Tire's back on. So that's obviously a good sign. Check it out. We're back in. Axles are back in, diffs back in, everything's bolted back up. This thing is going to slide, finally. Um, so I'm going to get the exhaust buttoned up. Uh, I'm just going to probably do like a little side pipe kind of thing, maybe. I don't know, we'll see. I don't have a whole lot of extra pipe laying around. and Just wanted to do a little motivation, a little encouragement for you. You know, when things aren't going well and you're in this project and you're working on your race car or your rock crawler or whatever, and it's just... You know, it, maybe it's kind of a newer chassis. You're not super familiar with it. 
um, it's just not going well. Like this one, like pulling the diff out, um, trying to get those axles out. And then when I finally dropped the diff, I had like part of the subframe kind of in the way. And I just, I didn't know what I was doing, but, um, and it is, it's easy to get frustrated, but it really is kind of a blessing though. Cause at the end of the day, I know that I'm going to be under this car a lot. Like this car is probably always going to be breaking with what I'm planning on doing with it. Um, same, same thing with my rock crawlers in the past. And, um, just take that time to really get familiar with the chassis. If you have to take a couple extra things apart, that's okay. Cause you just learn more about it. So, um, I know it's frustrating, but trust me, next time you do it totally will be way easier. It'll be way faster. Um, I mean, even just putting this thing back together, like it took me two days to get it all out and weld it up. And then it took me two hours to put it all back together because I knew what I was doing. I knew where everything went. I knew which bolts went where. Um, so yeah, just a little encouragement for you. And uh, with whatever you're working on, if it gets difficult, just uh, keep pushing and do it right the first time and learn as much as you can and just enjoy the ride, enjoy the build. So it's motivation with Gabe for today. I don't know what to do with my hands. All done with the exhaust. It's a little bit low, but I think, I don't know, I'm gonna end up raising the car anyways. Just a little side pipe there. I mean, it's pretty close to the ground, kind of angled down like that. I'll, I'll either cut it back or um, when I raise the car up, it'll be fine. I think I'll cut it. I'll, I'll cut it back though. So anyways, turned out good. I think I'm done for today. Car's looking pretty good. So I'll go ahead and fire it up for you guys. I'm not going to rev it or anything because I have some neighbors outside and they don't really like loud cars. So I won't totally disturb them. But we'll just we'll just give you a little a little bit a little taste. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel to see more content on this car, and uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out. Be safe.